Thank you for checking out this no spoilers movie review. This is for the film that is currently streaming on the Shutter streaming service, uh, Dude Bro Party Massacre 3. Now don't be fooled, there is no Dude Bro Party Massacre 1 or 2, but that's addressed in the very beginning of the film, which I thought was a fun and clever thing that they did with this. Uh, but I'll talk a little bit more about that. So this was a 2015 release. This is a film that's set up to be intentionally ridiculous, over the top, and funny. So there's a lot of comedy to it. Uh, I love horror comedies. I especially love ones like this that try to make fun of a certain genre. And this is making fun of like the 80s slasher film. So love 80s slashers, love 80s horror in general, love uh, horror comedies. So this kind of puts a lot of things together that I really like. Now, I went into this with a little bit of, um, I went into, into it being a little bit cautious about how much I thought I would actually like it because there's so many horror comedies that come out that just don't hit the marks in my opinion. They're just not that good, to be honest. Uh, and, and one of the biggest problems is it's hard to be funny and it's hard to be funny all the way throughout a film. But I was unbelievably surprised with the writing of the script for this film. It stays funny the entire movie. I don't think it goes more than one minute at a time without you laughing. Well, I mean, without people potentially being able to laugh. Like, Sometimes it takes people a lot to actually like laugh out loud at things, but things that at least you internally are, are like, oh, you know, that's funny. So it keeps coming. They, they did a really wonderful job of keeping it funny, and it was just like funny, 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 funny. But it's also fun. It's fun. It's funny. You get the, ridic the ridiculousness of it. You see what it's trying to do with uh, the satire of the 80s slashers films, and it just works. Like, everything about this film works. The only thing that I think people might really not enjoy about this film is the fact that they... Um, they make it intentionally look like you're watching a VHS film. Like that's the quality of the film is VHS quality. So it looks kind of blurry-ish. Uh, the fidelity of it is way less than people are used to nowadays. So for some people that may actually really bother you when you're watching the film. For me, it bothered me a little bit initially, but once I got like, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes into it, I was just rolling with it and I was fine. I was just used to it. So it's kind of like me and, you know, seeing films that have subtitles. Like, I'm very much aware that I'm reading for the first, like, 10 to 15, well, probably about 10 minutes-ish. And then after that, I just, like, I don't even really realize I'm reading. It just kind of, like, all meshes together. So um, it was kind of like that. Um, the practical effects in this that they use for the kills are great. They look really good, especially for what you would assume was a relatively low budget film. Um, they were fun. And one of the best things is in the very beginning, like I was saying, they they cover the fact that there is no Dude Bro Party Massacre 1 or 2. So what they basically do is they give you a flash, like a series of, of flashback scenes where it's like, this is what happened the, the first time around. This is what happened the second time around. And here we are for a third time, basically. And so when they're doing that, they're just showing you the kills. Like they're acting like they're recapping the first two films, which don't exist. And they're just showing you all the kills through one and two. And it's such a fun way to start things out because for someone like myself, like I love the practical effects of the kill scenes in horror films and they did a great job with it and they start it immediately and it's just like oh do you like 80 slasher kill scenes here's like rapid fire a bunch of them coming right at you and they had really inventive ones too that's the other thing it wasn't just like straight up like oh that person's you know hand just got chopped off oh their head got chopped off just different things getting chopped off they got creative and there were some kills there I had never seen before. And that speaks to the outstanding creativity of the people who made this film, which uh, a bunch of them actually act in it too. Like there are no like, um, as far as substantial characters go, there are no like huge names, except Patton Oswalt is in it as the uh, police chief. Um, and... He's good. I mean, he's great. He's appropriately funny and over the top like everyone else. I actually thought that all the acting in it was 
appropriate for what it was supposed to be. Like there, there, there's a certain mode of, um, bad, but intentionally bad. And you can tell that it's intentionally bad, that type of acting. And usually that ends up getting mixed with putting in actual good acting where it feels like you need it in the context of the story. And that's kind of there for I pretty much everyone in the film, to be honest. They did that perfect job of like acting well when they needed to act well and then acting terribly intentionally so when it called for that because it's a, a ridiculous, like intentionally bad film that's just super funny. So I really enjoyed that. The other thing is there were a few other big names who just kind of make small cameos in the film. Uh, Nina Hartley. I don't know if everyone knows who she is. She's actually a porn star. Um, I know some porn stars. Not going to go any further into that. I'm sure people understand. Um, yeah, so Nina Hartley shows up in it very briefly. Uh, Patton Oswalt, of all the people, like I was saying, he actually plays the police chief, so he has a decent amount of screen time. Uh, Andrew W.K. is in it. Yes, the... The has-been musician Andrew W.K. shows up as a character named Ripstick. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Uh, Larry King, yeah, the uh, the talk show host, uh, well, political talk show host, uh, Larry King shows up in it randomly, briefly, and I was just like, what the heck? And, oh my gosh, and my favorite of all. This guy actually gets a decent amount of screen time, too. Some people may actually not know who he is, but I know who he is because I'm a fan of crappy films. Greg Sestero. So, if you know that name, then you are a fan of The Room. Tommy Wiseau's The Room. And I am a fan of The Room. I love how terrible that movie is. To me, it is the quintessential, amazing, awful film. I love it. I love it. I love it. And Greg Sestero is in that film. And he's been in, he was in also um, Retro Puppet Master, which I haven't seen, but I know he's in it. So I am going to eventually watch that one. But uh, I was very surprised. I literally perked up when I saw him walk into one of the scenes. I was like, it's Greg Sestero. And the buddy I was watching the movie with was like, who? I was like, oh my God, have you seen The Room? He was like, no. And I'm like, ah, we need to change this. So at some point, that dude's watching The Room with me. But anyway, Greg Sestero's in it. He does a good job um, for what you know the film is supposed to be. Um, just so people know, there's a lot of crass humor in this. It's college-related humor. There's sexual humor. There's... You know, everything you can think of. When you think of immature, crass, college-related humor, that's the majority of the humor that's in there. But I'm going to be honest. I really find that stuff funny. I've never fully grown up. I'm not a mature adult. I think that stuff is very funny. I love it. Um, and it's just all throughout this. And they, they have some very inventive lines having to do with that type of humor that I did not see coming. They have a lot of like f really funny jokes that I didn't see coming. They did a great job with it. So uh, the dialogue, satisfyingly funny. Like I was just saying, you know, all those jokes. Um, the, oh, they, the, okay. In addition to the quality of the film actually looking like it was um, VHS quality film, they actually had portions where it's like, in the beginning, there's like a quick, uh, quick portion that looks like it was someone's like home video of a little kid riding a tricycle and then it goes into it and then there's like random inserts of like fake commercials that show up in it which I think was awesome because that gives you the idea and some people watching this may not know what I'm talking about if you're if you're too young gives you the idea that the film was taped off of television People, okay, I, this is where I really want people to make a comment down here because I'm starting to feel old in my life uh, because I remember back when I was watching movies that my parents would tape off of television. And sometimes they took the time to, like, wait and stop the recording when commercials came up, but you always got, like, a little portion of it because then you had to restart the recording when you thought it was going to come back. So you would always get, like, a portion of commercial when it was coming back. so Or you missed a part of it, so... But um, I really like that small touch that they made of making it feel like it legitimately was taped off of television. Because for someone like me, being, you know, the majority of my time I grew up in the 80s, I, I think I was, 
well, uh, at my oldest in the 80s, I was like nine, nine years old or something. But I watched a lot of TV and movies and stuff like that because I think a lot of parents used television as a babysitter in the 80s. Also comment about that down here, people. Or do you think that's the case? But anyway, I just like that touch. Like, they really tied it in more to the 80s slasher than they needed to. But those cool, fun, inventive touches are really, really appreciated by people like myself. It's just going that extra mile is how I see it. Um, yeah, and then the last thing I just wrote about this is, like I said, it is hard to keep a comedy funny throughout. It is specifically hard to keep a horror comedy funny throughout. And they did it. They did a really excellent job with that in this film. Um, it may, actually makes me very sad that there is no actual Dude Bro Party Massacre 1 or 2. <sighs> Maybe I'll just go back and watch the little recaps in the beginning of the film again. But uh, like I said, it is currently streaming on, or did I say it's currently streaming on the Shutter streaming service? I think I did. Um, but yeah, check that out. Dude Bro Party Massacre 3, a lot of fun. You can tell it's a really low budget film, but the people who did this knew what they were doing. There was a lot of heart there. There was a lot of talent there and a lot of creativity, and I love it. Anyway, um, yeah, that was it. Uh, any other Shutter films that people think I should be checking out? Go ahead and put some comments down there. You just want to talk about this. Have you seen this film? Do you want to see this film? Comment down here. Give me a thumbs up if you're down with what I'm doing. Really give me a, uh, a uh, hit that, well, don't give me, hit that subscription button. That's what helps me the most. That's what encourages me the most. When I see people subscribing, I'm like, nice, I get it. People get what I'm doing with this channel. People get that I'm trying to bring them as much horror content as I can. Going out there, watching films, so that people don't have to ahead of time to give you that determination. Is this something that you think you might like? So instead of, you know, spending an hour and a half watching a film, or this one movie had like an hour and 40 minute runtime, you can just watch this for you know, like 13 minutes is about how long this is going to be and decide. Does that sound like it's for me? And if it doesn't, hey, there's a lot of time you didn't waste. But anyway, thank you for checking this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.